Hello everybody, welcome back to another figure comparison. My name is Matthew and today I am doing a bit of a showdown between two MonsterVerse figures that I've wanted to sh see you fight for a long, long, long time. In this corner, we have, from the past, the NECA Godzilla 2019 version 2 from the King of the Monsters movie versus Playmates' new offering, Godzilla with Heat Ray from the new Godzilla vs. Kong film. Both of these figures are equally as unique, but only one can take the title as the Spitfire Monster vs. Godzilla in your collection, for affordable purposes, not the Monster Arts version. So, which one shall take the crown? Let's find out. First up is Sculpt and Paint, and we're going to be taking a look at the Playmates Godzilla here first. Starting off with the head, we have a very hard plastic-ish rubbery kind of feel to it, and the paint application isn't necessarily the best. We have one eye that is pointing upward, one eye that is more pointing downward, and the teeth are very mis mismatched, if that's the proper word to use. From this angle, it looks fine. This angle, though, you can barely see those suckers. Like. It probably has to do with the fact that it's more applied to one side than it is to the other. At least the paint looks pretty good. A little paint scratching because of the beam. But overall, the face paint is just mostly on par with the Space Godzilla. And that's not really saying much. Because that Space Godzilla in terms of paint was absolutely atrocious. The body has a pretty much... Think of the CGI render that they use in the movies. Just dumbed down in a very hard plastic. Though I do have to agree that the dry brushing looks pretty good throughout. The toenails here are very vibrantly painted with some nice brown paint applications despite no shading and it looks overall pretty good. The dorsal fins are the real sh show stealers because they're casted in a translucent blue plastic that if you shine a light either behind it or in them, they're going to look absolutely beautiful. And going even down to the tail, where it doesn't continue the translucent plastic, it's still casted in a nicely applied blue spray to, remin to give it that glowing effect. However, they had to pull a Bandai and not paint the spikes all the way, which is a bit of a bummer. And I also have a bit of a uh, Axis paint here. Uh, I remember seeing it on the bottom, I guess not. Uh, oh yes, here we go, right there. But it, it isn't really worth pointing out, despite me already pointing it out. So, when you really run it down, it's not a terribly sculpted figure, but I feel like it could have been amped with some more details to really bring it out more, and especially a much tighter paint job. It's NECA's turn, and oh boy, do they come and swing and banana slam a King Kong Donkey Kong style. They have basically everything you know about the original model they used in the movie and completely enhance it by giving it all this spectacular paint job with it being glossy, the veins, like you have silver, blue, indigo, light blue, a whole bunch of blues coming together to make this ultimate concoction of this beaut of a figure. I'm not sure how else to describe it. Words can't describe how cool this thing is. The paint applications on the tail are probably my favorite part. Actually, no, that goes to the spine. But this is pretty close up there. The bottom of the side of the tail is a bit plain looking, but when you really boil it down here, they really took their time. It's like indigo on the sides and then a light blue on the top. And it's kind of like the same thing, even though that the indigo is a bit sporadic throughout the top dorsal fins. The eyes are pure, pure white, which isn't a bad thing, because, I mean, that way that we don't have uh, any dirt eyes like version 1 did sometimes. Mine was pretty lucky, though. Hands are looking pretty fine. Uh, the detail work, again, is superb. Like, if you run this your hands down, say, the thighs, you feel every single bump crevice on this thing. And you won't be able to do that with version 2. Maybe some mellow sculpted detail, but overall, 
I'd say in terms of sculpt and paint, this guy definitely takes the win. Next up, articulation. For playmates, we have a articulated jaw. Opens about that far up, open, closes that much. The head looks like it's on a rotation, and it kind of does, but it actually splits the plastic here. Hold on, let me show the camera. Can I show it? Oh yeah, there you go, there you go. Yeah, see? That's not supposed to happen. Uh, or well, that is supposed to happen, just don't split the plastic or turn the joint. For our movement, we have, we can go up and down like that, all the way around on swivel joints. Legs can go that far forward, sorry, that far forward, that far back, same with this one. So, decent leg posability there, more in the line of a Bandai vinyl. And the leg has uh, one, sorry, the tail has one ball joint right near the base where you attach it, and the rest is just pure rubber. So articulation, it's more in the line of a Bandai vinyl, but hey, you can get some decent poses out of this guy despite it already being pre-posed. All right, Neko, show us what you got. You got a rotation at, actually you have a ball joint here at the head, hinge at the jaw like playmates. There's also a ball joint in the neck. However, mine has always been super stiff and I can, and I could never ever get this thing unstuck. So quality control issue, probably not, just probably a stuck joint. Uh, arms are on the ball joint. Don't want to mess with it too badly. Elbowed, elbows on a uh, hinge. Don't know why I struggle with that. A hinge joint, swivel joint, ball joint combo for the wrists. Ball jointed ab crunch. Ball jointed legs. Hinged knees. Still really stiff. Don't take this guy off the shelf too much. That's probably why. Uh, rotation and articulation at the feet. And then you have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think that's an eight, yeah, eight, nine, ten joints. So you have ten joints for the tail, and you can get a lot of cool poses out of this guy. Lots of fluid motion here. So in terms of articulation, still, I gotta give it to this one. Sorry, playmates. Now, in terms of accessories, this is where it gets a little bit hard to decide, because for NECA's, we have a beam effect, which is completely unique to this figure. Hold on, let's actually zoom this out a little bit. And we also have this impact base, which can connect like this, and then you put that in Godzilla's mouth. So, that's that's a perfectly fine package. For, ver for uh, Playmates version, we have an atomic breath that... I have determined is using the SH Monster, it's Godzilla 2014, 2019, Spitfire mold. And also includes some battle damage skin. Now, this is where it's going to be the deciding factor. This is an accessory. And I can prove this. When you get this guy out of the box, it comes like this, with the rib, with the rib cage. This is an entirely separate piece from the figure. I'm not saying it's like the tail where you have to attach it on. This is a different case because the tail is not advertised as an accessory, even though people some, for some reason do consider it. I even jokingly considered it an accessory in some of my NECA reviews. But this is an accessory whether you like it or not. It even advertises on the box that includes battle damage and it's packaged separately. So, technically speaking, we have a, a situation where both these figures come with the same amount of accessories, just different accessories. One features battle damage, the other one features an impact base, but both of them feature an atomic breath. And both of them have advantages and disadvantages. For example, this beam, while it's cool, it's going to slowly droop over time. Like that. And this battle damage... It looks cool, but if you keep putting it on and off, you'll actually start to see some paint scratching. Hold on, let me see if I can find this. I assure you that... Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you're able to see that. But on mine, I actually found like a few 
specs on mine. Yeah, it is not showing up on camera. Yeah, it's making me look like a liar. But I can guarantee you, it's on that figure, and it's starting to chip away. With version 2, on the other hand, its assembly is easy as this. But the problem with this is, the beam doesn't like to stay in, at least on mine, and there's no real good way to connect this. And then all of a sudden, like, you think you're, you think you're golden, but then... Like, there's no way to actually connect it. So you have to sit on something on the ground or maybe on another monster like King Ghidorah. So, in terms of accessories, it's a close one, but I'm going to have to give this one a tie. Simply because both of them have unique intentions, but both accessories kind of fit, have their own faults, which kind of bring both down. And finally, the last round is price. Now, I know what you're thinking. But Matthew, Playmates is only $10, NEC is $20. Doesn't that mean Playmates automatically wins? Eh, not really. Here's where the thing it comes into play. Is the price worth it? This is the real argument here. Playmates is $10. Yes, you're getting a a good decently looking Godzilla with some good accessories. But just remember that for the same price and from the same exact figure line from the same exact company, you can also get this King Kong, which is far superior than this Godzilla. It has way more posability, better sculpt, better artic uh okay. It is better articulated, better sculpted, better painted. And in terms of accessories, makes it a lot more worth it. This, in my eyes, if we're, com if we're talking, like, comparing prices here, if he's $10, honestly, if you never even told me that Godzilla was to go with Kong, I'd probably think that would be a $5 toy at most. So, Kong here is definitely a good figure. And that's not even it. Bandai's offerings are better than this. Because th here we have the show era Mecha Godzilla, which keep in mind doesn't have a CG model. It's a man in a suit, th so they had nothing to scan. This thing is a hundred percent accurate, at least from what I see, and it is near flawless. Granted, Mecha Godzilla is the most color colorful thing in the Godzilla franchise, but for what paint applications are there, they're applied with the utmost care. Except this eye spray, they probably forgot about that, but. Taking things to account here, this guy probably isn't worth his price. But you know what, screw it, $10 is pretty good if you don't compare it to anything. This is a bigger comparison. This is $20. I've seen some people say that this is better than the Monster Arts, which goes for like, I think, $100. And that's saying something. So in terms of price... Logically, I'd give it to Playmates, but I don't know. I might have to give this one to NECA on this. Yeah, I screw it. It's a tie. No one gets the point. So, final verdict with a score of 2 to 0 and maybe a couple ties. The NECA takes this round or this whole competition. Personally, I love both figures. I still prefer him over him, but overall... The Playmates is not a totally bad figure. It's just that there's other figures for the same price that are probably better than him. So, if you guys like this video, definitely like and subscribe to the channel because I might do more of these in the future. Just want to know like which figures I have that are fair fight. Even though people might not consider this one a fair fight, yet a long time ago I did the NECA Godzilla, Godzilla 1954 up against the Bandai Creations first Godzilla. Yet yeah, no one said anything about that being a fair fight, now did they? Or not being a fair fight. So if I can do that, I can do this. So see you guys later. Peace out. Playmates is not a bad figure. NECA's an awesome figure. See you guys later.